2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Mm -hmm. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Yeah. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and ever able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they, call, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as there also was, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yeah. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, to all good words. Yeah. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. Lord, and how it is, Lord, given by your inspiration. Lord, and it is profitable for us tonight and for yeah. every day. Lord, we just pray that you would just help us to continue in those things, to be steadfast, unmovable. Lord, looking for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, that we might be found in him in peace. Lord, that we might be presented unto him without spot and without uh, blemish at his appearing. Lord, we just pray that you forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In the last days, starting in verse 1, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. And that uh, first uh, statement there in, in, chap, uh, in verse 2 pretty much explains the rest of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is because of they, are, they are lovers of them of their own selves that they are covetous, that they are boasters, that they are proud, that they are blasphemers and disobedient to parents, that they are unthankful and unholy, that they are without natural affection. They're, they love themselves too much to love anyone else. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, they don't know how to stop themselves because they don't know how to tell themselves no, amen? They love themselves too much to hurt their own families. <laughs> Fierce, despisers of those that are good, anyone that makes me feel less than I am, I hate. Mm -hmm. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such. This is the perilous times he's talking about here. You know, we, we think of perilous times as, as maybe the stock market crashing or perilous times as, as maybe great storms that uh, wreck our, our uh, nation or, or wreck the world, the earthquakes in diverse places, and those are perilous times. But the perilous times he's talking about here is the, the love of many waxing cold. Yes. Those who... Uh, served the Lord and were on fire for the Lord, turning to themselves and serving themselves yeah. and having a love for pleasures more than lovers of God. And that's the perilous times we find here. 
get worse, as he said. As it's uh, said uh, down in verse 13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And that's what we find. Every year that goes by, it gets worse and worse. Those who have left the faith and who have left the truth of God's word to uh, build their lives upon lies. And to spread those lies, deceiving and being deceived. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 3 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of perdition be revealed the son, or and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And we know that that is what is left, amen, to happen before that day of Christ shall come. Yeah. But we see that we are already in a falling away. We see that many have fallen away from the truth. Many have gone uh, to uh, the world system. Many have infiltrated the world's things into the church. Many have infiltrated the world's ideology into their uh, doctrines and into, yeah. into their uh, the way of, uh, that they practice their faith. And this is not something new, but this is something, as he said, that would wax worse and worse. A faithful man, who can find, as the yeah. Bible says, amen? Who can find a faithful man who will stand upon the Word of God and the Word of God alone? Amen. Not to compromise what the Word of God says and how the Word of God teaches us that we are to conduct our lives and to serve the Lord. Yeah. It's hard to find nowadays yeah. in, uh, in talking with missionaries. And, and these missionaries go from church to church. And in talking with some of the missionaries that come and visit our church, they talk about how it's getting bad. Mm -hmm. It's getting bad in, in churches everywhere they go across the country. How, how many churches that they weren't were at, not just 10 years ago, but now are visiting again uh, on, on uh, coming home and, and reuniting with these churches that they've been at before. And how many things have changed. How many churches have compromised their doctrines and how many churches have compromised in what they used to stand upon? Yep. And you know what? If it's on our own beliefs, then we need to get right. Amen? Yeah. But if it's on the, what the Word of God says, then we must not compromise. Yeah. We must not change yeah. if it's on the Word of God. Yeah. Now, if it's on us, then we need to see, seek and search what the Word of God says so that we can stand right before God. But when it's on the Word of God, we can't budge. Amen. Because if we do, then we're in the cross pairs. Look at 2 Timothy, chapter, back in 2 Timothy, look at chapter 4. This message also could be titled, What to Expect in the Last Days. Listen, we, we can't go uh, live our lives with blinders on mm -mm. and think uh, everything is peaches and creams and, and, and rainbows and, and, and lollipops, okay? We need to be real about what's going on because we might find ourselves slipping and sliding. Right? That's right. We need to know that it's that God's word has been given to us for us to keep, and that word yeah. keep means to fight for, amen? Yeah. God delivered it unto us into our hands that we might fight to keep it. Amen. Amen. To lay hold on eternal life. Amen. Amen. To lay hold on it and don't let it slip. Amen. Don't let it slide. But to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Yeah. Listen, this is happening before our eyes yeah. in, in the country we live in, not just our country, but many countries. But I tell
tell you what, this country used to stand on the values of the Word of God. But we're slipping, even in our churches. Even in the churches that uh, we uh, uh, ourselves are named by. The independent Baptist churches have been slipping. Yeah. Because they've started to look for other ways to do things instead of keeping to what God said Amen. to do. To stick to the Word of God. And so now we find that no one can endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear it anymore. They don't want to hear messages that are about sin and living in sin. They all want to have their ears tickled because they have itching ears. Yeah. They all want to feel uh, comfortable in church. Well, I want to tell you, sometimes it's good to start squirming in your seat because the messages are stomping on your toes. Amen. Yeah. We need to feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Because if the conviction of the Holy Spirit ain't here, then God's not here. Amen? Yeah. We need His convicting uh, power upon our lives to show us that, listen, we ain't all that. Amen? That's right. We ain't as good as we think we are. We don't have it put together as much as we think we are. But we do. Yeah. And we need Him. Amen? Yeah. We need Him and His wisdom. As I preached yeah. this morning, we don't need our reasoning and and, and to uh, see from man's perspective what God wants. Uh, and someone was preaching about the prophets in the old days and, and how the prophets began to uh, uh, preach and, and they would use their own words and think that it was uh, they were speaking for God. Listen, we cannot but speak. We can't speak for God unless we are speaking His word. That's right. Right. We can't come up with our own wisdom and think that we're doing God a service. Yeah. Because our wisdom is as foolishness to God. Yeah. We have to stick with the wisdom that God has in His Word. If anything more than that, then we're adding to it. Amen. Yes. And we're in trouble if we do that. Right. And we definitely better not take away. Amen. 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 We need the whole counsel of God from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Nothing more and nothing less than what God says. Look at Romans. Oh, I'm sorry. That was uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3 and 4. Back in our text in chapter 3, we find that uh, Paul begins to talk to Timothy about what he's gone through because people have departed from the faith. Even in, in Paul's time, we find that the people had started to uh, add to the faith and, 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 and add things that weren't uh, uh, supposed to be added, such as, yeah, you, you need to believe in Jesus, but yeah, you need to be circumcised too. Yeah. And we know that in Galatians, how Paul stood against that, yeah. saying that circumcision or uncircumcision availeth nothing <laughs> but a new creature. Amen. Right. That's what makes the difference, is being a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And so we know that because of his stand, that he suffered persecution for that. And if we're going to make a stand, we're going to suffer persecution. Yeah. If we're going to stand apart, not from the world, but apart from those who claim to be Christian, claim to be the churches of God and are going their own way, if we stand against them, we're going to be persecuted. Man. It wasn't from the worldly crowd that Paul was being persecuted. It was from the religious crowd, the mm -hmm. ones that said and claimed that they were Christians. That they stood upon the word of God. Listen, that's where the persecution is going to come from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's those churches who claim to be the, uh, standing on the word of God who aren't. Mm -hmm. And when we don't want to be a part of them, as he tells us not to have uh, uh, any part with them, from such turn away. Amen. When we turn away from them, that's where the persecution is going to come yeah. from. Well, you think you're better than we are. Mm -hmm. Well, who do you think you are? And you don't think it hasn't started happening. It has. Yeah. It has. But we need to make a stand anyway. Amen? Because we have to stand before the Lord and give an account. Amen. Not before man. And, and he talked about that. He said, you know, you've fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience, persecutions and afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, and Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but the Lord, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yeah. Amen. And I want to tell you, apparently.
perilous times have come, and they're going to continue to get worse, mm -hmm. and we might have to be persecuted for our stand on the Word of God, yeah. but I promise you the Lord will deliver us out of them all. Yes. Yeah. If we'll stand upon His Word and keep His Word by faith, mm -hmm. He is going to stand for us. That's right. Yeah. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16 through 18. Here he says, At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it might not that it may not be laid to their charge. You see, it wasn't the world he was looking for to stand with him. It was those who claimed to follow Christ. Those were the ones that forsook him and stood not with him. And listen, it's those who claim to be Christian who are going to persecute. And those who will not stand with us, and those who will badmouth us and talk behind our backs because we want to stand upon the word of God. Yeah. Just as he said, and all that will live godly shall suffer in, in Jesus Christ shall suffer persecution. Yes. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Yeah. That by me the preaching might be fully known that all and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Yeah. And he says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You see, he was also persecuted for preaching to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. They didn't think the Gentiles should have the salvation of Jesus Christ, that it was should just be for the Jews. But yet, even though his brethren wouldn't stand with him in the flesh, God stood with him. Amen. Amen. God stood with him. Amen. That by him the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. Yeah. Listen, God has a work for us to do. Yeah. We can't allow who stands with us and who don't stand with us no. to stop us from doing what God wants us That's to do. That's exactly yeah. right. It doesn't matter who stands with us as long as we know God stands with us. Amen. Amen. And if we're doing his work and staying on his, and, and, um, his word by faith, then we know that he will stand with us. Amen. Amen. And that he will deliver us as he delivered Paul. Look at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 and verses 12. 20, starting in verse 21. It says, I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with my with the flesh, the law of sin. Therefore, is therefore there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, yeah. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Listen, who's going to deliver us? He said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver me from my own temptations? Amen? We have this temptation where we would do good, evil is present with us. Amen? Amen. Because we have this sinful, wretched body that we carry around. Yeah. Amen. And I tell you what, many people have given in to that. Yeah. Many people have given in to their flesh, and that's why they've left the truth of God's word. And they have swallowed the lies of Satan. Yeah. But who is going to deliver us from even ourselves caving in to our own temptations? Yeah. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. That's how, through Jesus Christ. 
Christ our Lord. Amen. That's how we are going to stay on course. As he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Yeah. Amen. Don't get, don't allow yourself to become under the bondage of the law again. To think that by keeping the law that we are better than anyone else. Because we're not. That's why Paul said, back over there, he said, in, in uh, chapter 4, he said, I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's a lot of people falling by the wayside, but they still need someone that will speak truth. Amen? Yes. Yeah. They still need someone who will love them enough to tell them the truth. We can't despise but we have to uh, uh, keep ourselves in the love of Christ. Yeah. Keep ourselves growing in the grace of the Lord. Yeah. Listen, just because we uh, don't want to have anything to do with those who've fallen away don't mean that we have to think that we're better than they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we are just as, uh, uh, have just as much potential in us to fall away as they do. Yes. We have to keep ourselves humble before the Lord. Not thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Yeah. And know that the only way that we can stand is in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1 and verses 9 through 11. says, but we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, mm -hmm. but in God which raiseth the dead, yeah. who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Amen. Yeah. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, Thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Yeah. Listen, don't start having confidence in the flesh. We can't pat ourselves on the back and say, well, we've outlasted a lot of churches. We're standing on the word of God. Look at them over there. They've fallen. Mm -hmm. That's not a badge of honor. Amen. Mm -hmm. That should break our hearts to the point of bowing on our knees to pray for them. Yes. Not to use them to lift ourselves up. Amen? Mm -hmm. Not to use the thought of others, you know, uh, uh, falling away from the Lord to think, well, well look at us. We haven't fallen away. Mm -hmm. You better watch out. Amen? Amen? Don't get prideful just because you think that you're on the right track. You need to be fearful before the Lord. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen? Amen. Yes. You need to keep yourself before the Lord and not have confidence in the flesh. That's right. But have a sentence of death in yourself, amen? To crucify the flesh with the affections of lust so that you can stay on the right track. Yeah. And it's not because of your power that you're able to keep the, the word of God, but it's by his power that we're able to keep his word, amen? Yeah. As we humble ourselves before him. And listen, I think that's what happens to a lot of churches, is they let pride set in. And as they begin to preach against sin and about all these people out here that are living ungodly, they begin to pat themselves on the back about how good they were, they were and about how much they had done for the Lord. Listen, we can serve God from now until if we live a hundred years every day and still not do enough to repay what yeah. God has done for us. Yeah. Don't ever think that you're better than someone else because what we are sinners saved by grace. That's right. And what we do for the Lord is only because He uses us. Amen. Amen. And so let's stay humble before the Lord. And don't allow pride to set in because when pride sets in then great is the fall. Amen. Great is the fall. And that's what's happened. As many churches and many Christians have let pride set in to where they think that they're really doing something for the Lord. They really think God really needs us. Amen. If it wasn't for us, there would be anyone in Altus doing the will of God. Woe is us if we ever get to that point. Yeah. Because God can use the stones on the ground. Amen. If he wants to. God can use the trees if he wants to. We just need to be thankful that he has found us faithful to put us into this ministry. Yeah. Amen. That he's counted us worthy. And stay humble before.
think you've grown as much as you can grow. Because I promise you haven't. <laughs> none of us have. And none of us will. As long as we are on this word, earth, we have more that we need to learn. I tell you what, I've spent some time just studying and, and prophecy and things of, of prophecy. And the more I know, the more I know I don't know. Right. Amen? I mean, there's so much in the word of God that I don't know that it, it, it uh, 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 makes me want to study more. Amen? Amen. It might, makes me want to humble myself more before God and say, God, I know nothing. Amen. Lord, show me what Amen. you want me to know. Amen. Show me what wisdom you have for me. Because we don't know everything. And that's why we need to continue in those things that we have learned. Amen. And continue growing, adding to our faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge patience. Amen. We need to continue to grow in the Lord and in His grace. One, all Scripture was given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished under all good works. As, as we grow in the Word of God and in our faith, our fruits are going to continue to grow. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our fruits are going to continue to produce more and more in our lives to the glory of God and the Father. Yeah. And as the Word has said, the Word of God says, and you won't be barren. Amen. You won't be barren in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's where our fruit grows, is in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because He's the vine and we're the branches. And the more of all, in our knowledge of Jesus Christ and His Word we grow, the more fruit we will produce in our lives. Amen. Look at 2 Timothy, back in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, it says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, right. there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Right. Amen. Amen. To continue. Watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. What does an evangelist do? Go out and preach it. Amen. Yeah. That's what we need to do. The persecutions that happened to the church. We talked about that woman, that Phoenician woman in Tyre and, and, and Sidon the, uh, this morning. What happened to the church when they were persecuted? They went out into Tyre and Sidon preaching the gospel, and there became churches. Amen? Yes. Yeah. All around, even in Antioch that he's talking about here where he suffered persecution. Yeah. That's what we need to do is do the work of an evangelist. Yeah. Continue to preach the word. To give out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then we will be found in him in peace. Amen? Yeah. Then we will be to his glory at his appearing. Mm -hmm. And we can all say that we love his appearing. Amen. Yeah. That we are looking forward to his coming the second time. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verses 13 through 16. <coughs> says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Mm -hmm. Quit you like men. Be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the fr first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Yeah. That ye submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helpeth with us, and laboreth. Amen? That's the best 
to the ministry of the saints that he has given to us. And then Revelation chapter 14 will be through. Before we read this, I know there's not a whole lot of football fans or sports fans for that matter. And <laughs> I tried to give this example in Sunday school class, but the best defense <laughs> is a good offense. <laughs> And I know that probably goes over the head of everyone. But seriously, in sports, a good defense is because of a good offense. If that team has a good offense, that means that defense gets to rest. Amen? It doesn't have to work as hard. In basketball, when that team runs down the court and they put up a quick shot and it's a bad shot, they didn't get into their offense and, and pass the ball around and then get a good shot. They get one early in the clock and they miss and it bounces off the goal and then that other team gets that ball and runs it back and gets an easy layup. Because the offense was bad, their defense suffered. And you know what? The thing that has suffered most in churches is their offense for the Lord. Because they've stopped going out and giving the gospel. Yeah. They've stopped preaching the gospel. Their defenses have fallen. Right. And Satan has crushed the church. Because they have stopped preaching the yeah. word of God. Yeah. Right. I think I get it. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 13, it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Yeah. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest. 